NASA has some good news for anyone wanting to travel to space. Enabling a vibrant economy in low Earth orbit has always been a driving element of the space station program and will make space more accessible to all Americans. For the first time ever, the space agency announced today it would be opening the International Space Station to the public. Trips would be arranged by both SpaceX and Boeing and would run tourists nearly $35,000. But what a trip of a lifetime. For more on this, I want to bring in Mike Reed. He's the Commercial Space Utilization Manager for NASA's International Space Station program, and he joins me now from Houston. Hi, Mike. Good afternoon. So this is exciting. Tell me a little bit more about NASA allowing private astronaut missions. How would it work? Well, let me back up a little bit. <clears throat> the whole reason we're doing this is because NASA is always going to have a need for space, for training, for research, for uh, systems development. <clears throat> right now, we're the only customer up there. And if that's the case in the long run, that's not going to work. We can't afford to be the sole uh, payer of the funds for a new platform. So we're using the space station to try to stimulate what would be a new demand for space so that we can become one of many customers. And private astronaut missions is just a single plank in the plan to increase that demand. I guess the question a lot of people would have, though, is, you know, as exciting as this would be, uh, the, the cost of it is prohibitive. So we're going to see a lot of wealthy people probably uh, first in line. But how do you guarantee their safety? Um, they would be flying on NASA certified U.S. domestic vehicles, either by SpaceX or Boeing right now. And so those vehicles have already been through the rigorous certification process that, that we require for our own crew. There's the same vehicles we're transporting our crew on or will be transporting our crew on. So from a flight certification standpoint, it's, uh, it's no different than our own crew. And what would be the prep time for somebody who wanted to do this besides <laughs> raising the money to go? A lot of it's going to depend on how much training they require. If they're a professional astronaut, let's say from one of our partner countries, or maybe a sovereign astronaut from a country that doesn't have a space program and they want to do research, it's probably about a two-year training program uh, ahead of the flight. If they want to be a space tourist, we basically teach them how to use our emergency gear, um, how to use the comm and the galley and things like that, the hygiene systems, and that's a much shorter period of time. How long would someone be up there for? Um, right now, we're targeting windows of 30 days or less. Um, it simply becomes too difficult to sustain a crew for longer periods of time because they have to have access to exercise equipment, which is uh, it's fully subscribed right now by our own crew. It is amazing, uh, Mike. You know, so many questions in terms of what someone would experience once they're inside the space station. Well, there's, there's a, a very broad uh, array of research capabilities in there. Uh, we have uh, optical window to do uh, limb viewing and, na and nadir viewing of the Earth. Um, there's all kinds of systems that uh, we're testing, advanced systems for the exploration program. Um, there's a plethora of, of activities going on at any, any moment in time up there. Well, we got to leave it at that, but uh, throw me on the waiting list, Mike Reed. <laughs> Mike Reed, Commercial Space Utilization Manager for NASA's International Space Station Program. Appreciate your time today, sir. Thank you.